are you feeling when you have that inner narrative about how you think about providing learning value to your organization? What is that? What is that narrative like? You know, what are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself about whether or not you're adding learning value or business value or, or something in between? And so we're very curious about that. But what we're going to do first, right, Laura, you want to show that, do we want to show the slide? Yeah, it's just about what, when you describe your value to other people, like in the last project, how do you describe it? What makes you feel proudest? And I, I think it's really good to kind of place ourselves on the spectrum about how proud we feel about our own value and how we recognize ourselves, what measures we use for ourselves to describe our value to other people. So I know that um, we've probably come back to this quite a few times, but you know, it would be great to know which elements of this spectrum you naturally feel drawn to. If someone says, did you do a good job? If you're entering an award and they say, what are, you know, what, what are the kind of value that you actually delivered into through this project? How would you describe it? What are you most proud of? Um, so it would be great to maybe use a stamping option to get your feedback on this, um, to say, you know, how do you currently feel about your learning value? What, how proud are you? in that in that space so um yeah if you want to use the stamp to say how you might normally talk about your value the things that make you feel proud um in these different areas it would be great to see where we as as a group of people um kind of collate around in this space yes yeah. and i i do think that it's important to note that sometimes laura would you agree that sometimes um it's variable mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's why that's why it's there's no good place or bad place to put your stamp on this spectrum right now because of the reasons and the you know the context that we're actually in as an as an organization. So yeah, Jen, I, I want us to let, move into that. <laughs> um how we currently define it, how others currently define our value versus where it could be where it should be. I think it's, it's something I think we should I'm glad you've raised that. I think we need to be talking about that today. Um, about others' expectations on, on our value there. But what's really interesting is to see this kind of broad brush kind of, you know, reflection against this template. And Elizabeth, I think all of them, I think is really interesting, um, you know, how your clients describe your value. So it would be interesting to know where you would stamp yourself if you were your client <laughs> about what they're looking for in this in this space as well. So I think, that, I think that's really important. So I'd like to ask, you. So based on what you're seeing here, and we're seeing learning value. And so under learning value, we have learning activities, learning efficiencies, learning engagement, learning usefulness, and then it flips over to the business value side, where we're talking about business performance, business culture, and affecting those two very uh, important areas. So what are you thinking when you're looking at this? So does anybody want to um, open up their mic and share with us What's your immediate thought looking at this value spectrum and our question? You know, what's that inner narrative that you have? I, I was just going to say, for me, um, I kind of came to an aha moment the other day talking about the, the business impact of learning and development, um, because that's where I want to get, because I feel like that's where we're going to be taken seriously, is if we can show our business impact. Um I was getting very, very frustrated in my, in my role. And what the conclusion I came to is because of the fact that we have not focused on the business value of what we do. It's always been a, um, rather than being very proactive, it's been very reactive. Like, Hey, we need this right now, rather than kind of coming up with a strategic plan and, and doing, and that's kind of where my brain goes. And I, I'm not necessarily surrounded by people that think that same way. So for me, it was really interesting to see this because where I see my team focusing currently right now is on that far end of the, the learning value and where I want it to be is on the opposite far end. Right. There's a, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there, right? right? But that, that also explains my, fr my current frustration. Sure. Where before I could not verbalize why I was frustrated. Now I can. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw, and so Jason, and then I also see you, Kelly. So Jason, let's go to Jason real quick. So when, when I joined the organization with now, they were focused on that far end of the learning value, which is just compliance. Did people, were people doing this? And now we're, I'm shifting them to that usefulness as is this training actually initiating change or is it being applied out, of, out in the field? Mm -hmm. So what do you think that means? I mean, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm impacting the, 
the the business more now by through the training that we're developing and it's not just you know boring click 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 training where and i have heard that from some of our our stakeholders that you know what we've done in the last two years is has made a difference and it's not uh, just repeated training over and over again really valuable uh, observation there it's that kind of shift from just doing things for people to helping them do things back better back in the organization so I really like that kind of analogy Ke kelly's been very patient there with your hand <laughs> your hand up waving <laughs> It's, it's all good. All the, the conversation is great. I have been trying to shift us to more business value. The organization was definitely looking at learning value, but I would say they weren't even looking at the usefulness of the training. I mean, it's like, how useful is this? So I've been trying to change the conversation to performance, but I still do a lot of compliance training. And so when I speak to my stakeholders, when it comes to compliance training, I do say that I want to reduce risk and whatever compliance training that we do, we really should be um, focused on reducing risk and changing performance. And I'm asking them, where are your highest risk areas and what aren't people doing and why? And so I'm trying to flip the conversation from a checkbox exercise that we did the training to let's look at what the risk is and how can we change behavior. And I think, Kelly, and in fact, all of you so far, and thanks, Andrew, for coming in on this one in, in a moment. But I think one of the things that I would observe from what you've all said is that it's not just about proving how much we an impact we've made on the business but our willingness to have a conversation about what's going on in the business um and that's i guess one of the reasons why i've been looking at this for so long is that you know the high performing learning teams in in pretty much all of my studies um operate first from seeing their value operating in that business area even when their business don't ask them for that or don't expect it you know when the business is coming to them and saying oh you know I want get me a course give it to me now get me a course give it to me now you know Kelly your your observations Jason with you Jen you're all saying actually we want to ask the question about where this is um and that has really it was an aha moment for me during the COVID period because I was looking at the data saying okay why are so many people like talking they want to talk business value but at the same time they seem to be stuck in measuring you know how many of the completions what are the learning hours and all of those kinds of things I, it was a real sense of why don't we do this but actually it's the attitude covid showed me that it's the attitude that we bring to our work um that actually starts to make the difference not that we can prove that we're valuable to business but we're willing to have the conversation about business we're willing to have that conversation about risk when everyone's asking us about compliance we're willing to have the conversation about how do we do things differently back at work when everyone's asking us for a piece of e-learning course you know it's it's that it's where the place from where we operate actually I've realized is becoming more fundamental for us in the extent to which we are positioning ourselves to be valuable back to the business and Andrew I get your point about typically when we look at ROI we talk look at you know how what is the benefit over cost the benefit cost ratio but actually if we think about how something is perceived as being valuable um that's a really important aspect of our work and if we perceive ourselves as being valuable to the organization rather than just valuable to our learning profession that shift us in the way that we're able to be more curious about what's going on in business so um for me i'm 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 super interested in how where this conversation um is going and and andrew thank you for giving me um a little bit of moment of reflection there i appreciate appreciate that putting you on putting on hold for a moment and saying welcome welcome back in <laughs> no, so you, andrew you, <clears throat> i was gonna say no you're absolutely spot on law and, and the the this idea of reflecting on what we do is, is 
and how we prove it is really important now and and you've you've actually nailed it so you know through lockdown you know we all said okay so we've got to deliver stuff differently well the question then is well how do we demonstrate that we are doing that differently so our measurement tools and the way we measure has to be done differently as well because the expectation has changed around us there's a, a lovely model that i see called perception leads to expectation leads to reality so the perception of what the learning function does creates an expectation of what the learning function does and then what we do people then create the they go all oh, right well i expect the learning function can only produce courses for me so the expectation is they come to us for a course the reality is we can do more than that the moment we do something more than that then that changes the perception of us and that's the issue we've got around evaluation and proving our value if the expectation is all we can do is tell how many people have been on it that's all they'll ever ask us to do we need to actually demonstrate through the reality that we can prove business value and when you can prove business value you start changing the expectation that comes from the learning project